Okay, so moving right along, now that we've got drums charted, we need to go in and create some animation cues to actually hook up the drummer avatar with the music that he is supposedly playing. And right now, if you were to audition this song in Rock Band, you'd be seeing the playable drum part coming down the note highway, but the drummer himself in the background animation would just sort of be sitting around bobbing to the beat, because unless he's in an idle state, he's going to be connected to the beat track, which is down here, and this essentially lets the avatars know where the beat is, and that'll kind of help their animation be in sync with the music at a general level but he won't actually know what beats he's supposed to be playing unless we explicitly tell him to. And it, the game is not able to figure that out on its own because the drummer that you see on screen has a full-size drum kit rather than just a handful of pads that we've got on the Rock Band drum kit that we're able to author gems for. So if I pop open the drum chart, you'll notice if you watch the previous segment on reductions that my reductions are missing here. And the reason for that is I haven't done them yet. <laughs> Um, I'm actually recording this segment prior to episode 5 where we would do the um, reductions and the reason for that is when I'm working on my animations here I wanted to kind of minimize how much stuff is is here in the chart visually so there'd be less to look at and less to be distracted by. So this is my expert chart up here. Down below in this area is where we're going to set the animation cues that will tell the drummer what to do so he'll actually look cool playing the drum part for hard strings. So the way it works is you're placing MIDI notes just like you would to create the playable part in the game but when I place a note here for example let me zoom in a little so it's easier to see um, when the playhead crosses that note at measure 11, the on-screen avatar is actually going to hit his little kick pedal on his drum kit. And then each time I do that, then he'll play along uh, like so. So the, um, the kick pedal is actually the easiest one to do because it's a one-for-one -one relationship with the kick gems that we authored up here. It gets a little more complicated when you have colored gems that are used for multiple purposes depending on what's going on in the song. So I'll shift click the last gem and that will get all of my kick gems from the chart that I authored up above here. And then I'm going to hold down the control key to create a copy of all those and then just drag the copy down to the very bottom of the chart here and put it onto that lane that control essentially controls the animation of his foot and um, and then move on to the snare drum so the red gems here are where we authored all our snare hits I'll grab all of those so then I'll hit control and drag those down uh, just like I did with the kick just making sure that I actually land on snare hard left hand, which is typically where you're going to land, except when you get into areas where you've got more rapid snare hits or rolls, where you want to start alternating the hits between the left and right hand just so the animation looks a little more like what it really would be. Next is the yellow gems, where it gets a little more complicated because these yellow gems are usually hi-hat hits, but not always. So since most of them are, I'll start by moving the whole lane. I'll just copy this whole lane down onto the hi-hat right hand lane. And then go through the song and start trying to find areas where I authored yellow gems that are not representing the hi-hat. So for example, at the end of this section here, I've got three snare hits, and the last one sounded to me like a, a flam, where he might be hitting the snare with two hands. And so to simulate that, um, I'm, I'm having the player hit the red and yellow pad, which means that at that moment, that yellow gem's not a hi-hat gem. It's another snare hit, and so I'll have the avatar hit that with hit the snare with his right hand so he's actually getting to hit the hit the snare with two hands there and 
And then I think there was another one just like that at the end of the next section right here. Here's a spot where we've got a triplet being played on the snare drum. And so I'll, um, I'll actually have the animation alternate hands right there. And when you get into alternating hands, you want to start thinking about the sequencing and making sure that they're ending on a hand um, so that if they need a free hand for another beat right after that to reach over to one of the other pads or cymbals, that it's not going to look weird. And sometimes you just have to experiment a little bit. So here's another example of a yellow gem that's no longer representing the hi-hat like it was over here. Now it's representing one of the toms. And so... What I'll do is figure out which tom I want that to go on to. We've got a series of rack toms and then some floor toms. So just thinking about the order, we know we're going to want to end up with the avatar hitting this crash symbol with his right hand. So he's pretty much going to be hitting this tom with his left, right, left. You typically end up kind of working backwards from hitting the crash. So I need to see him hitting this uh, tom with his right hand. So when I drag that yellow gem up, I'm going to be probably aiming for tom 1 or tom 2 right hand. And then that'll be joined by uh, the blue gems that we'll be working on in a minute. So at this point, we should start taking a look at these blue gems because those are, in a lot of cases, actually hi-hat gems where we need to animate the hi-hat opening on screen, which is not something that you really get to do in the game when you're playing, but we can still show it in the animation. And so what we'll do when we're working on the blue gems is those the blue gems that represent an open hi-hat like this one here is we'll move that down onto the hi-hat in terms of the animation and then there's actually a separate gem that we we'll use down here that says hi-hat open and you can basically stretch out a note over a period of time and for the expanse of that period of time this little hi-hat symbol will be open and then it'll close automatically when you hit the end of that note Okay, at this point I've finished putting in all my animation cues. Um, I went ahead and grabbed the green lane of gems from my expert chart and brought those down as well. So those are now reflected on uh, the crash. Now some people use the green lane sometimes for a crash symbol and sometimes as one of the toms, like a floor tom, all the way over on the right hand side, which is fine. I just have a tendency not to use it to represent a tom just because for a player who doesn't have the symbol kit installed, you're invariably gonna wind up with sequences where they're hitting the green pad simultaneously for two different two completely different things which I try to avoid um, other people are probably better at finding strategy for handling that than I am but um, as, a as, a, as a result of that I just have a tendency to kind of not use the green as a tom but you totally can so in this case most of my green gems ended up being crashed uh, gems down here in the animation hey baby, it's easy to believe 